So thank you. Yeah. Okay. We have some catalogs too from Linzel, so you can grab a catalog. Um, not only have the lighting in there, but there's probably some water, um, uh, the, w the water stuff in there as well. People are Just start. Just start. Yeah. All right. Hope you're all having a good day. Uh, sorry, but this is an actual TED talk. Me being TED, all the others were imposters. So. I have been asked to do a presentation on native plants. Okay, so this is my rendition of what is a native plant. Okay, now when I did this uh, seminar, um, my goal is to get you excited about using natives, whether you do an entire native planting or incorporate natives with other plants. I've done lots of research on this. I've got 35 years experience doing this. So we've kind of mixed and matched it all together. Uh, do I know everything? Absolutely not. Um, if you have questions, ask. I'll do my best to answer them. But there's a lot of research that goes into using natives. It's not as easy as it, we think it is. Um, it's not foolproof. Mistakes will happen. So this is your welcome, your 101 on natives. Okay, so what is a native? A native is something that grows there. It is not snuck in with the luggage. It is not moved in from another country. It's not snuck across the border. Okay, natives are true to that area. Um, you got up north, you know, if you've driven up north and, and look, watch, learn. If you ever drive up north, you see that birches and larches do fantastic. And then we take those plants and we move them down here. And we're like, what the heck? Like, what's, what's going on here? And it's not, they, they, they like the cold, they like the soil, they like the minerals, they like everything. Maybe it's too cold down, or too warm down here, right? You plant these things in Windsor, it's too warm. You, you put them over in Hastings and Prince Edward County, Ottawa, they're just, they're just not happy. And some plants, especially the natives, are companion plants, which means they like to be with their buddies, okay? So that's native. Um, and then just because something is native, let's remember it's not native here to this area. That, that, that's critical, I think, right? Because we all think, oh, it's a native Ontario plant, it'll live with there wherever it wants. You are gonna get me repeating some things here, um, but that's okay, right? 
repetition is good. Just because you see something everywhere, remember, that doesn't make it native. Purple leaf sand cherries aren't native. Stelladora daylilies aren't native. Carl Foresters aren't native. Spreading junipers aren't native, right? And I've heard that before. Oh, that must be native because I see them everywhere. It's not. Trust me, it's not. When you drive, if you really have a passion for native plants, like take a look when you're driving down the road, right? And, and even if you drive, like I said that to Samantha, we work in the same office together in, in here. As you leave Burlington, drive down the QE, get past Toronto, really take a look what's out there because you'd be surprised how the geographies change. And plants that you saw all the time before all of a sudden don't exist anymore, right? And you move into the next phase and it slowly fades out, okay? So like I said, this is your 101 on native plants. Benefits of native plants. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm gonna read them, you know, supports populations, ecosystem of pollinators, animals, birds. They do actually save water and money. They increase resilience and resistance to local weather, so they're, they're used to where they have to go if done properly. They are actually less maintenance. They may be a little more finicky to start, a little harder to get going, but again, we're gonna to touch on it later, do your research, okay? Don't just assume it'll live. Um, the big thing for me that I like about this there's a big problem with us moving into all these native areas and we have to restore the natural habitats. Um, I'm not what you'd call a tree hugger, but I think we really, really, really have to consider the environment and what we've been doing to it with just clear cutting this and clear cutting that. And in this country, we've been so blessed and we're, we're, we're so well off that we, we don't even know it. And just around here, I grew up in the, in the Millgrove area, which is about five minutes from here, but about 15 minutes, they call it the Beverly Swamps. Has anybody heard of that? Okay, so the Beverly Swamps now, with everything that's happening on the other side of the world, the group and governing body, whatever they call it, that says, you know, this is what we need as, as part of the biosphere, the Beverly Swamp is now a protected area because of its natural wetlands and it's become the absorption of pollution. And they're finding that Mother Nature and, and native areas will take this in, but it's not gonna be a harm. So th these things are thriving, right? So as we've got so much unused land here, we have to, have to be careful and, and we have to protect it. Um, some native plants are invasive, okay? So be careful, make sure, look around, right? And, and especially, Invasive plants, you can plant them, okay? And, and you can put them in, in a residential area. You can put them in their f confined areas where you might get in trouble for using an invasive plant is if you're planting it near a river or a stream or a naturally natural area, right? So, so be careful of that. Watch what you do, because we sell invasive species here. It, it's inevitable. Why? for that simple reason. There's a place for them, so don't be afraid, but watch where you're planting them, right? Especially if you're gonna go do something near a main body of water. And they're a natural, or they have natural defenses, okay? And we're gonna talk about that, you know, like bugs are okay, right? Andrew might argue with me, he's gonna come and speak to the harms of bugs later, but there are good bugs, right? So if you see a bug on your native plant or other plants, don't panic because what we've talked about earlier, the small animals and birds, they need those bugs to live, right? And, and if we just constantly remove these things, we could be in trouble. Okay, uh, next slide, um, native species. Uh, we've talked about native species, and again, research, research, research. Um, University of Guelph has this great little guide here of the, you know, landscape 101 of native plants, okay? And because it's in Guelph, a lot of them will do fine here. Again, it's just a list, do your homework, what does it need, right? So 
we're talking natives, right? But when you go to Johnny Q homeowner, they're not going to want just all native plants, right? They're going to want a mix. And, and that's perfectly fine. Because um, sometimes, you know, they say, I, I saw that I liked it, and that native plant would look cool in my yard. It might be the worst place to put it. Okay, so there's, there's a cultivar of it. So here, you know, like you got your red twig dogwood, we all know that, the Cornus sericea. Um, there's, a, there's a variety called Bailey, okay? Same color, same leaf structure, um, same patterns, right? And, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of close natives come because someone saw a patch of native plants and they saw one or two that looked a little different. And they pull it out, they hybridize it, and they call it whatever. So there's lots of things you can use. And to use something close, there's nothing wrong with that. We don't have to worry about that. You know, another example, you got the Asclepius tuberosa um, milkweed. Okay, we've heard the monarch butterfly. Um, it, it, it needs that because that is the only plant that it will eat to keep alive. And then with that, it lays the eggs and, and the whole cycle goes on. But I found that if you use the Asclepius ice ballet, and, and I had a customer once that did this. They planted them both because they didn't believe me. And the subspecies in this case was actually the favorite to the monarch, right? Now, maybe not in all areas, but it's okay to veer off. You have your acerubrum, right? The most popular native plant out there. We all like the acerubrum. Uh, it's native. Silver maples are native. But they've, for example, come up with the, the Jeffers red, right? It's a great plant, and what it's done is it's taken the best of both worlds. It's taken the color of the rubrum and the growth habit of the silver, right? So think, there's options out there, okay? And, and we know that, you know, in a commercial setting, your free mani will do a lot better than the rubrum, okay? Again, going back, just because a plant is native, doesn't mean it's going to work everywhere. So do, do your homework. Research, research, research. Um, and and the plants have to be adaptable to their surroundings, right? So be really careful with, with what you do, okay? As I said, I'll repeat myself, but that's okay. You know, I need to be repeated too. And, and we just need to know that native is fun. You can use the natives, but it's not always the best thing. So people say, how do you know you're getting proper native plants? Um, go to a reputable place. For us here, we have a perennial department and we have a purchase for the perennial department, which actually takes it very seriously. And they make sure that they go to the suppliers that are taking proper cuttings, that are using the proper seeds. Um, so you, you got to have faith that where you're going the plants are what they say, okay? And if in doubt, ask, you know? Natives are underused, and, and I think we could all, you know, even us here, right, know a little more about it and, and just where the seeds come from. Um, try to get local seed sources where you can and, and not from across the world because we just know they'll be better. And again, some native plants are just so hard to find because they will not propagate, right? So we just have to go enjoy them in the beauty of their natural surroundings, right? But there's, there's always options. There's so many plants, it's not even funny. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Right, so lots of natives, you know. Some of these pictures, like you see the ferns here too, right? And we think, oh, that'd be beautiful to put anywhere. But, you know, anybody that knows ferns, we understand that, that they need certain things, right? And even if we do go and create a new garden that we want to introduce some of these underlying native species, it takes time, right? I love rhododendrons, right? And, and just an example, it took me 19 years to get rhododendrons on my property, right? Because you got to make sure you have the right area. You got to have the right soil, right? So it's not just a question of boom, here we go, let's plant it off we grow. It's not going to happen, right? So you got to pick the right, right stuff. Your first steps, um, really, really go for a walk, right? Go out, enjoy Mother Nature. 
Um, go on the fringe of the forest, right? But be careful because some plants that are on the fringe of the forest might not be native. But as you go further in, take lots of pictures. When you go back, do your research on it, right? And, and just see. But walk around, ask questions. Um, Google. I'm not a fan of Google. Everybody that knows me knows I'm not a techie person. Um, but there's lots of good information on there. And as you're looking at the good information, make sure you don't take everything as face value and cross-reference cross things, right? Because there's a lot of false knowledge out there as well, as we all know, and people trying to push other products. So homework, homework, homework. You're going to make mistakes, okay? And you're going to plant something that might not live. It happens in the, in, in the native world, right? Because we're trying maybe to push the envelope a little bit. And with the cultivars, sometimes it's easier to do that. But you got to be careful with the natives. Losses are natural. It's going to happen, okay? And you have to explain that to your client too, right? Like, we're going to do our best. And, and let them get involved. Let them pick plants as well, right? Because you never know. Maybe you'll find something again that you can use. Okay, uh, any questions? Okay. Um, planting area. Kind of, uh, you know, a lot to learn here. Uh, is it a new construction site or is it a natural landscape? Is it an existing meadow or are we trying to create a natural area? The big thing with planting native plants is to try and manipulate or move the soil as little as you possibly can. Okay, so uh, a lot of people might think, oh, the best thing to do is just put all new soil in. Natives want to be as undisturbed as possible. Okay, and that's, that's the key to their success. And I think a big part of that is because nobody babies them when they're out in their natural habitat. And it's either live or die and fend for yourself. And they get the nutrients from the soil, the micros and all that. So I, I think it's, it's important to, to just add straight topsoil if you have to do anything, but let's be careful, right? And, and we got the micro risins and stuff like that and talk to Brad, He's, he knows way more about that stuff than I do. Give him a call, whatever. Uh, but it, it puts the nutrients back into the soil that these plants need and the proper enzymes and stuff. Um, so when you're doing this, your planting area is critical and, and, and a lot of your time and a lot of your work will be spent on the job site and the prep or lack of it. And what I mean by that is you got to follow your soil conditions and, and you really got to pay attention. Is it wet? Is it dry? Is it a sandy soil? Is it a clay? Is it rocky? Is it straight topsoil? Pay attention to the light that the plant gets where it is, right? And you can't take a native shade plant and put it in the sun. And it's sad because I, I, I've seen a lot of people that, that in designs that come across my desk and, and I will question them, trust me, uh, you know, and if you send me or Samantha a list of, of plants, we look at them. We don't just price it and, and we, your success is our success. So we answer whatever questions you can but just because we like it, it's not going to grow. Like you, you can't be putting native plants on the fourth floor of a condo with six inches of soil, right? But I've seen it tried, and, and it's just a, a, a failure waiting to happen. So watch that. Um, traffic conditions, okay? Like we think that's not a big deal, but that you know, if you're along a major roadway and the traffic's moving by constantly in the middle of the winter blowing salt and brime all over the place and, and, and creating a, a cooler temperature and it fluctuates all the time, maybe not what you want, you know? And again, just because we think we want to see this here doesn't give us the right to do it, okay? Do your homework. And I'm not trying to scare anybody off of native plants because the benefits of, of doing them is incredible, right? Like I, I read this one article and, and you might have heard this talk before. And this guy eats and breathes native. And he had a native maple on his property. 
And when you looked at it from afar, got up close, the plant looked perfectly fine. He sent a crew in there around his property to count the bugs in the native trees. Okay, so these bugs are what's feeding the environment and feeding our friends and feeding the whole circle of life. In his red maple in July, he counted 200 or 2,500 bugs, eggs, lava, whatever, in his plant. Close look, you didn't see a thing. But as he's doing this, he's noticing these birds and this and that and everything going in there to eat these plants. Went to another native tree, an oak, and he found 1,400, same thing, all different styles. His neighbor across the road, and this is just a fence, right, in the road, had, had a, a pyrus chanticleer sitting in there. One bug. Okay, so if we say it doesn't matter, we want clean plants, all these trees that he had that had all these bugs in there, they look great. But it was food for all the animals that we rely on, right? So we think that we can do without it. Um, and yeah, it's patience. Um, I'm not saying that you can't put more stuff in your garden, but let it grow. Let it evolve. Uh, you know, you might want to say, okay, I want to put this in here. And you might say to your customer, like, yes, you want this plant. We're going to have to be patient. We're going to have to wait a couple years for the trees to grow. We'll use it as an under, understudy plant, you know, and, and it'll take time. Um, and if you notice, too, you know, a lot of native zones and native plants um, cover the soil. Right, with a ground cover or even a mulch or something, because what that does is it, it keeps the, the, the moisture in, it keeps the just healthy, healthy plants, right? And, and natives, if you're going to do a big native meadow, it can be messy, right? But if you get different things in there, it'll be fine. Okay, um, choosing plants. Identify the purpose of the native plants in your design. Design with four seasons in mind, and I think that's critical, right? We like to think that there's only two seasons, spring and summer. Uh, then we start to get a little cold, and we're like, well, I hate fall, right? And, and that's a big problem, and, you know, most of your business and most of your customers want everything done in the spring. They want it now. But there's four seasons in this country, you know, and for those of us that, you know, sit here all winter, it's nice to have something to look at in the winter, you know, and you can do that with so many things. You've got blooms, you've got berries, barks, pods, fall color, branching habit, right? You know, like we get a lot of snow here and then it's gone. So, you know, put plants in that, you know, will hold the snow for you, right? Because that's, that's another interest. You know, my pet peeve is, you know, we get the grasses that they grow all nice all summer long and all fall. And then as soon as October comes, we cut them down to the ground. Winter's a season. That brown is gorgeous, right? Like my grasses still look nice, you know, and it's no big deal. It's not going to hurt them at all. But it also gives you food for the, for the birds, right? It gives them, you know, coverage. They, they could start in the spring making nests because they're usually ready to get going before we are. Right, so there's all these things to keep in mind. You know, and again, identify, identify the planting conditions. You know, sun, shade, moisture, whatever. Right, so when you're working on this, okay, it's okay to use the mix of native and non-native, okay? Because you're probably going to find that if you use a non-native, you're going to get a more unique design because you can go and pick that specimen plant or as I like to call it that living work of art and you can work around that right so there's so many different ways you can start in it you know so just make it unique you know because they have the better frame they have the have better structure um, big pet peeve of mine and I shouldn't say this because I'm a salesman <laughs> right but your, your plants are be happier remember don't pack it full from day one, okay? Especially if you're going to use a mix of natives and non-natives because they will choke each other out, okay? And, and it's inevitable. It's going to happen, right? We do our best to think this is only going to get this big. That's going to get that big. 
but the plant still has a mind of its own. Okay, so it, it's going to grow and do what it wants, but we have to pick the right plants to go together. Um, it's survival of the fittest, right? So have fun with it. Okay, um, real simple, you know, you've got your elements of design. Um, uh, uh, just going to give you three quick plant designs. Um, you've got your matrix planting, they call it, and this is with perennials and with anything else. It generally refers to putting your, you know, your larger plants at the back and working your way down, right? And when you do that, you know, especially with natives, if you're going to go that type of planting, it's probably better to put them in larger groupings instead of one here, one there, one here, one there. So when you when you do that matrix planting, like put big batches of stuff in, keeping your highs at the back, and that depends on what kind of planting background you're looking at. You know, is it along a roadway? Is it against a building? So all those things you got to figure out. Uh, focal planting, that's that's simple. You know, refers to an area that jumps out at you. Okay, so you're going to plant that vocal point and it's going to be absolutely gorgeous and your eye is going to be drawn to that one plant or that one group of plants and there's going to be other cascading effects in there. Okay, um, and, and, and again, do your natives, right? There's nothing wrong with having a native garden and it's going to take time. Like You're not just going to sit down in front of a computer and do a native design in like five minutes, right? We're so used to doing somebody's house and, and when we drive up to that house, we already know what we're gonna do because we've talked to the customer and we already have an idea what we wanna use. There's a little more challenge involved in native, right? Because y you, you, know, you could be buying it for the flower, you could be buying it for the seed pod, you could be buying it for the branch. There's so many different things you can buy it for. So homework, 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 right? And, and if, you know, native plants, they flower quick, they go quick. Then you move on to the next one. So you're going to have to have a, a, a good selection of plants to choose from even, right? Just so you can have something like that all, all year. And it was interesting because when I read the one article, this one person wanted to do their yard completely native, okay? And he lived in the city. And what he actually did was he warned his neighbors that this would happen. And they're, of course, like freaking out going, no, no, I, I don't want this big, huge oak in my backyard. And no, you're not going to put all those flowers. But he said, bear with me. He said, just let's watch this grow. And, and it became the garden of the neighborhood, right? Because it was done right. So have fun with it. And then there's scatter planting uh, with your natives. And again, on all this, you can mix it up, right? So you can either go straight native or you can use a combination of the two. And it's just mixed pockets of different things that flower at different time. So that's your scattered. It's more for the wow now factor than anything else. Okay, and we're almost done here, so sorry I didn't take my hour. Your last thing is make it personal, okay? Put some elements in that you like. Uh, put some elements in that your customers like. And when I say make it personal, we all know the flight of the monarch and the, or the plight of the monarch, right? Like, since 20 years ago, the population is down 80%. So I'm going to be an advocate to say, everybody, go plant an Asclepius in your yard. They're beautiful, but you know what? It keeps the plant. But Mrs. Jones might hate those, and she likes birds. Research it. Find out what plants like are, are good for birds. Right? Bees. You know, if we don't have bees, we're not eating. Plain and simple, right? Because they do such a wonderful job. But there are certain plants that, you know, you plant one or two of them, it might be better for, for the environment. When you do these plantings, make sure you've got an element of water there because as you're attracting the wildlife, they're also going to want water. Okay? Just like us. Um... That, that, that I think is very important. Um, 
yeah, good plants, you know, example, the cedars, right? They get the, the lots of seeds in there. The white cedar is very good for that. Uh, it also, too, gives a place for some of these animals to quickly dart in and dart out if they feel they're under attack, right? So if you're going to go that far to have a nice native garden to bring all these birds in, you also got to think of things like that, the element of surprise, right? Because there are predators looking to eat them, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, another great plant for the birds, and, and I just learned this the other day, right? We, we hear the robins right now coming around, and we're thinking, okay, well, the ground's frozen solid. What are they eating? Well, believe it or not, they're eating the sumac berries, right? So, you know, pines, you know, lots of food in there, spruce, uh, perennials, seeds for the smaller birds, you know, seeds for squirrels, chipmunks, um, stuff like that. So make your garden personal, have lots of fun with it, do your research. If plants die, don't get frustrated. It happens to the best of them, right? And I, and I know this. I, like I say, I work wholesale inside the office there, and, and I get lists that are just native plantings, and the next year I'll get a call that will say, you know, can you give me some of these? They all died on us, right? So death is a part of, of this. Don't be afraid to do things. Don't be afraid to have fun and research, research, research. Google is your friend, uh, a reputable nursery. I kind of like Conan nurseries, okay? Great bunch of people here. And I'm not saying that everybody that you walk up to will have the answers, but they sure know who to go to, okay? It's not a question of knowing anything. It's a question of being humble enough to ask if you don't know, right? I mean, I've done this for 35 years and I'm still learning. Probably the most learning I did was in the last two weeks putting this together. <laughs> okay, so I'm done. Sorry I didn't take that long. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so th th this question has been asked, where do I stand native or non-native? I'm okay to be put on the spot. Uh, this is my thoughts on it and mine own, okay? We got to have a mix of both, okay? Um, in a residential site, Probably not a red maple because it's going to get too big, okay, especially with all the, the small yards that we have now, and you heard me say that this morning. Every plant has its place, native, non-native. I mean, if we were just going to sell native plants and just promote native plants, we'd be fools because that's not how it works. Um, if somebody's got a big, huge property, like 20, 30 acres, please put some native plants in there. You're not going to go wrong. If it's the right area for it, low maintenance, easy maintenance, right? I, I can't ever remember really having to prune a native plant too much because they grow where they grow and they do what they do. Um, but the new ones, absolutely. Some of these cross crosses are fantastic, right? Others have come and gone, but your red sunset for a red maple, right? If you got a small, the red point we saw this morning, Again, it's derived from that native. Um, yeah, native is not for everybody. Absolutely not. Did it answer it? Yeah, I was just going to... I've given you a political answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, like, if someone says, okay, you're selling 10,000 autumn blade maples, and all of a sudden in 20 years they're going, oops, we shouldn't have done that. Is, is that, is that ever a concern, too? Taking all these non-native... <laughs> And uh, 
necessity is a mother invention, and I agree with you. Let's not plant everything as one. We have to be diverse. I agree. I agree, Ted. That, that I was just going to say that. I think the most important thing is to get a variety of plants in there. Point in case, uh, case in point, I, I come from Toronto. City of Toronto planted these horrible, horrible Norway maples everywhere. They are so invasive. They're so awful. They don't provide any food for the, um, the, the caterpillars because nobody will eat them. Yes, they're hard as nails, but that's about the only good thing about them. So definitely trying to integrate natives with the um, cultivars. And I think maybe we could start by striving for 25%, perhaps in our designs, and then see um, where we can go from there. Yeah, I, I'm just given the 101 here from Ted's perspective. That's why we're calling it a TED talk, okay? But, you know, don't get me started, as my kids would say. Just leave the old man alone. Don't get him going on this, right? But we're so worried ab about what looks right and what looks wrong. And I'm only saying this for thought, okay? And it could be politically incorrect, so I got to watch my p's and q's. And by no means represents the interests of Kona nurseries. nurseries. <laughs> but we have the gypsy moth, okay? And it goes through and it devastates the leaves on the trees, and it goes from the front of the forest to the back of the forest. We can't spray. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, that's fine. That tree will come back. But for three years in a row, if we allow this to happen. What's going to happen to the understory planting? Okay, so we got to watch all this. And, and when we do these native designs, we got to watch it. Because if there's no leaves on the top of the tree, the birds want nothing to do with it. They're out of there. The bugs aren't going to live that underneath that the birds need and all this and that. So you, you, you got to have, like we just said, the happy balance. Off the top of my head, if I'm going to practice what I preached here today, no. I don't know the soil. I don't know how much sun it gets. I don't know the shade it gets. I don't know the water it gets. I don't know the proximity. Now, if my email is real simple and I'm going to regret this, it's ted at conan.ca. Ask me questions. Well, okay. so if you're looking for a list of native on our website in the, yeah. re in the resource tab, You'll see uh, plants for various uses, and so you'll see the juggalone tolerant, the uh, the native list. You'll see a lot of info right there. Yeah. So so start with that. But the big thing is right. Like you, you gotta you gotta look at your soils. You gotta know what your median is to start. And I'm not trying to avoid giving you because you you call me, I I will help you. That's my job. My job is to sell. My job is to help. Right. But I I need to know some questions. I need some questions answered. Light, shade, sun, soil, stuff like that. And we'll, we'll work. We'll get some natives in there. Anybody else? Awesome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ted.